Also been working on the stove. Um, this was missing the uh, adapter when I got it out of the scrap yard, so um, took a piece of pipe and ovalized it at the bottom, tried to match the uh, outlet as best I could. Um, it's still not quite perfect. Gonna work on this a little bit more. Um, I may, uh, I don't know, maybe try to take a ball peen and because uh, the bottom of this has got the, the shrinking around it. Might try to knock out some of the shrinking to, to swell it at the top because this is tapered. Um, see if I can get that to fit a little bit more snug in there. But uh, looks like it's gonna work. Um, we'll keep picking at it. We've got the pipe mostly set up here. Uh, I'm gonna have to make a thimble to replace that window and uh, make a heat shield for the back there. And hopefully get some worms in here pretty soon. But keep plugging away at this step at a time. All right guys, so we got updates. Um, did a bunch more tin knocking on that uh, oval adapter for this thing. And I uh, got it fitting quite a bit better. Uh, so we're calling that all done. I still got to make the thimble um, to pass through uh, where the upper window currently is. Um, picked up a bunch of used double wall stove pipe and uh, in the process of uh, trying to figure out how um, I'm going to hang the, uh, the adapter for the T-section uh, that will mate up with the thimble. Um, but to clear the eave, we didn't have uh, quite enough room, and apparently this is a common problem, so I don't know why they don't make these so they adjust out farther. But um, we're just uh, measuring out an extra inch and a half and uh, blasting a couple extra holes in here. And uh, then um, what I'm going to do is uh, take some of this uh, garage door, um, whatever you want to call it, steel, angle iron hanglage and uh, make an extra frame just to stiffen this up since it's hanging out farther than it was. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's about the long and short of it. We're getting there. Um, keep slamming this together and uh, give you another update in a little bit here. All right, so now that we've got the bracket for uh, the T-section finished with the little extension on there. We need to address the thimble section. So the plan for this is uh, I don't really want to put a hole in the wall if I don't have to. So this, uh, this window has removable uh, windows, whatever you want to call it, panels, panes. And I had already replaced that window um, because this is the uh, original upper and lower that was out of it, and they're all rotten. But the uh, upper, I don't know if I've got this backwards, the upper has a bad lower, and the lower has a bad upper, or something to that effect. So I'm going to take the two of them apart, take the glass out, and then make a good frame out of the two bad frames. And then the plan is to remove the gasket off the double pane glass. Um, I've got it off one here already and you can see some of the some of the rotten what's what's left of the frame um, and then take uh, two sheets of uh, masonry board and we're gonna basically turn this into a thimble and that way uh, you know if at some point down the road if somebody doesn't want a stove in here they can just pop the window out and put a regular window back in again and vice versa um, should be quick and easy uh, with a little bit more work in the front end to to make this work so i keep moving forward with trying to get this glass out of here and uh, keep trudging along <laughs> Now that we got the glass out of both frames, now we got to try to get uh, the, this end off of this frame and attach it to this end of this frame. And uh, totally winging it here. Um, I've never taken one of these apart before. I don't know how they come apart. This end was easy because it was all rotten. Just pull. 
but uh, now we actually have to be concerned about not breaking it. So, so we'll start pulling screws out of this, I guess, and uh, see what falls apart. Sounds like a plan, sorta. Okay, so we've got our masonry board cut and we've got our stovepipe pass-through cut and now we need to make this fit the window frame. So the opening for the window frame is a little bit over 5 eighths of an inch for the gasket. Um, the window itself is exactly 5 eighths of an inch. So we discovered that the masonry board plus a paint stir stick is exactly 5 eighths of an inch thick. So we're going to take some stir sticks and some liquid nails and we're going to bond the perimeter of the two pieces of masonry board together and it will be exactly the same thickness as the double pane window and then we will put the gasket off the double pane window around the masonry board and get this put together. Alright, we've got all our spacers glued down now and we'll put one more thin layer of uh, liquid nails and bond the next section on. And there's our assembled unit. So now we will put the window gasket around it and uh, slide this into the window frame. Here we go. And there it is. A finished window wood stove pipe thimble. So I think tomorrow or the day after we'll uh, get this put in and uh, lay the pipe through it, get the uh, bracket up on the side with the T-section and uh, put the chimney up. And you guys can see how this goes together. Turned out pretty well. This uh, definitely could have gone worse. So we're not gonna complain. Well, we started this in the middle of the day, and it's clearly nighttime now, after nine at night, but we have a chimney. Probably should have gotten video of this because uh, it would have been entertaining for all of you. Nothing ever goes smoothly, but it's done. It's up. We're making progress anyway, and I didn't want to leave you guys totally in the dark, so keep plugging along here. We're about to have heat. First time ever. Oh, we're almost there. We're doing a layer of uh, clay sand on the bottom. Uh, these reburn stoves, Vermont Castings or Scandia, they all recommend it. Um, you can use ash. Uh, but you have to build a whole bunch of little tiny fires to make a layer of ash. 
Sand has better insulatory value and you don't have any ash. So sand is just kind of a better way to go all around. So you just kind of spread it out evenly until you got about an inch, inch, inch and a half in the bottom. And uh, we'll start our first fire in here and see how it works. Now it's been about 20 minutes and uh, threw another log on there. But she's burning. Got my uh, dress up piece up here. Finish that off nice. Almost looks like we knew what we were doing. But we wing it really well at least. Alright, stoked it again. Door is shut. And look at that. There's a griddle temp of 350. Flu temp about 500 degrees. That's, uh, that's perfect. So, hopefully we're in business here. All right, guys, one last update for the evening. Stove's idling down now. Um, uh, stoked it up a few times, got it real hot. I have not yet uh, rebuilt the damper for this, the air inlet damper. Um, this particular stove, I think I mentioned in the earlier video, um, it's designed to be controlled with a bimetal uh, thermostat, which regulates the air inlet down there in the corner. And uh, I have not rebuilt that yet. So basically this is running wide open throttle right now. Um, but uh, good first burn, uh, slow warm up, and then uh, fired it pretty hard to bake the paint in. Not too bad for uh, some redneck builds on a budget. You know, the old $20 wood stove is cranking out heat in here. And uh, it is, I mean, it is warm in here. I, I, it's gotta be close to 80. So, can't complain, man. We're making headway. All right, guys. So, we're going to utilize the new old workbench. Um, got this bag of goodies for an old dual burn or reburn wood stove. Um, going to see what's in here. This is supposedly all crap for uh, the bimetal thermostat. Haven't gone through it, don't know what I got. So we're gonna see if we got enough in here to uh, build a thermostat. Well, we've got a damper door right there. That's what that is for sure. And the chain, the control chain. Um, yeah, we got, this is our temperature adjustment rod. And there's a bimetal spring. Well, we definitely got the essentials, so that's a plus. I'm guessing this is the hinge pin for the damper door. What else we got in here? Hopefully there's nothing sharp. Hmm. It's a mystery bag. It's heavy. What else we got? Oh, well, we got a mess, that's for sure. Let's get the vacuum back out again. Dirtying up a nice clean new workspace, I'm telling you. We got a bolt. Bolts are good. I like bolts. A whole bunch of rust and dust. We got a tiny bolt. Look at that cute little feather. <laughs> what else is in here? Anything? Washer. Washers are good. Okay. Yep. Oh, we got. Another bolt. There we got a match set. Okay. And then looks like just debris. Now, unfortunately, with this assembled against the back of the stove, due to this nut, it's pushing the bimetal spring so far out that I barely have any clearance between the bimetal spring and the face of this plate. So even if I go the spring on the opposite side route, it's not going to work 
with that nut on there. So we have to get it out, get it off of there, no matter how you slice it. So I'm going to start with some uh, map gas and uh, see if that does the trick. And if it doesn't, then, well, we'll resort to uh, cutting it off with a cutoff wheel. All right, here we go. All right, so this was definitely a science experiment, but we have found the magic combination. We got two washers and one new spring on one side and the old spring with no washers on the other side. And that seems to be just about perfect. So I'm gonna go slap this on the stove and then I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. All right guys, so we got this mounted on the stove and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about here. Here it is bolted up and you can see that the, the shield is holding the, you know, if you can see in there, holding the uh, bimetal spring pinched between the two springs, one on the front, one on the back. And there's enough tension on this to hold it in whatever position I put it in, which is the end goal. This can't just flop because it has to hold the damper in a certain position and then let the bimetal spring control the opening and closing of the damper relative to temperature. So we'll slap the damper on here, which I don't think I'm going to be able to do with one hand. But uh, that just goes in there like that. We'll uh, utilize the knee here. Slide the axle shaft through. All right, guys, well, it's the next day or the next night. But uh, again, you wouldn't have known that if I hadn't told you. I did finish this last night, but uh, every recording device that I own died. So I couldn't show it to you. But here it is all put together. And you can see that we've got the bimetal thermostat in there. And we got the chain coming down to the damper door that I was fighting to get in there with one hand. Went very quickly with both hands. And uh, yeah, so you just select a position on the thermostat and that will hold the door wherever you want it. And then as the spring heats up, it will allow the door to shut and it will throttle the air inlet based on temperature. And the selection of this lever just determines what temperature range the stove is gonna run at. So we're gonna get a fire going here and uh, See how this thing burns with the thermostat on it. All right, guys. So the $20 scrapyard wood stove saga continues. Um, not a big deal, but uh, it keeps setting up the uh, smoke alarm in here. And uh, went through and inspected this really closely. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you this or not. But there we go. The seams, um, the stove cement and all the seams is just done. And uh, I'm assuming that this is probably uh, pretty substantially contributing to the smoke detector going off, although I don't see any leaks. I cannot physically see this leaking, but it's certainly not ideal. So anyway, um, we're gonna go through and scrub all of the seams with a wire brush and we're gonna re-cement all of them and see if it helps. It can't do any harm to the stove. If, you know, it doesn't matter how you slice this, the stove benefits from this, it's gonna run better. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do it. And hold All right guys, just to keep you in the know, this is the sealant that we used around the pipe, um, around the uh, thimble for the wall pass through or window pass through, um, it's Rutland, 500 degree silicone sealant and this is what we're going to be using for the seams around the wood stove itself this is furnace cement good for 2000 degrees this is applied a little bit differently um, you're supposed to dampen the surfaces I clean them up with a wire brush first um, just to make sure there's no loose crap on there or anything like that uh, dampen the surfaces squirt it in there um, and then let it cure for an hour or so, and then you're supposed to slowly fire the stove within 30 days, um, and slowly bring it up to 500 degrees, and that'll take this to full cure. Um, so anywho, um, we're gonna start squirting this into all the seams. Gonna do around the top first, then I'm gonna do all the sides on the outside, 
And if I have anything left, then I'm going to do a headstand inside the stove and do the profile on the inside of the top seam just for some added protection. Um, I will probably go around the edge of the stove pipe too, just for giggles. I don't think it's leaking there, but what the heck, you know, why not? Why not have it sealed right up? So and if I've got the material, might as well use it because you know how it goes. You crack one of these tubes and if you don't use it all, you put it on the shelf so that you can use it later. And then 10 years later, you find it and it's hard as a rock and you're like, why did I save this? You know how it goes. So we're going to use as much as we can right now while it's fresh. Let's well, wrap, guys. All done. Did all of the seams, all the verticals. All the seams around the top plate, underneath, all the way around the whole thing. Um, did around the stovepipe, just for giggles. Did this stovepipe seam, the whole gamut. Did the inside of the stove. So, hopefully now, we won't be setting off the smoke alarm anymore. I'm uh, really eager to start a fire, but uh, unfortunately we got to wait an hour, and uh, it's getting late. So I'll probably fire it up tomorrow, and uh, see what it does. But this should be the last little detail that uh, really was definitely wrong with this stove. The door gaskets aren't great, but they seem okay. So we'll run those for a bit, and uh, yeah, eager to see how this goes. So I imagine we'll see you tomorrow. Signing off for now.